Hello viewers. Medical devices industry is an integral part in the healthcare ecosystem and is playing a critical role during the ongoing COVID-19 crisis. Today, we are privileged to have Mr. Rajiv Nath, Forum Coordinator at uh, Association of Indian Medical Devices Industry, that is AIMED. He will talk to us about the preparedness of Indian medical devices industry in terms of meeting future requirements. Welcome, Mr. Nath. Namaskar, thank you so much. Right, sir. So, uh, with India ready to roll out the COVID-19 vaccine, the biggest question facing all of us is how the medical devices industry is prepared for this mega mission. Well, what's your take on this? Sir? So, the medical devices which are involved in the uh, vaccine delivery would be the syringes for drug delivery, uh, the shops containers, uh, the needle cutters, uh, the disposal systems those are mainly accessories uh, to the medical devices, not actually medical devices, right. but are integral part of the logistic system which are required for delivery of the vaccines. And for that, uh, we have been preparing ourselves since uh, uh, April, June, I would say this year, uh, 2020, vaccine would be manufactured. And when it would be available, then they would be needing the syringes and their uh, similar kind of uh, delivery of products. So we'll be preparing ourselves accordingly. As the rollout can be expected anytime soon, so are we ready with the supply chain or even the stock keeping units as of now? Yes, so we have been uh, since uh, April and June, I had written to the health secretary and to the prime minister's office as well as to the secretary pharma that there is a need for a stockpiling of syringes in the country because uh, the uh, WHO PQS uh, qualified manufacturers for auto disabled syringes worldwide are very limited. And we were one of the four leading uh, suppliers to UNICEF. We knew that there would be a global demand plus a major Indian demand, India being the uh, second largest population in the, in, the, in the world. And uh, there were more vaccine manufacturers and more vaccines candidates in the pipeline. So stockpiling was a very good option which we had offered. And WHO and UNICEF uh, had considered our uh, advisory. And in August, they had come back to us and then they had placed an order to us in July uh, for delivering uh, 140 million pieces between August and December uh, 2020. Uh, the government of India woke up to that uh, much later. So in October, they did a review exercise with us. And then they started placing orders with us in November, December. So 177.5 million pieces from HMD alone uh, have to be supplied by March. And then they've taken out a tender on December 30th for 350 million syringes to be supplied between uh, April and August, uh, for which we have bid for uh, 20, uh, 20 million pieces uh, from HMDs. And I would say that we are better placed in terms of syringes in being Atman Airbus. As you said, that we, we actually made a little bit of delay in the process. So, is it somehow going to put a stress on the manufacturers, on the domestic manufacturers, because you need to meet the demand from global market as well? Uh, balancing supply and demand. So far, uh, we've already started supplying the syringes. So we supplied 60 million syringes in December. We plan to supply 60 more million more uh, this month. And like I mentioned, we plan to finish 177 million by March. So right now, the syringe supply is ahead of vaccine. But at some period of time, the vaccine manufacturing will catch up and may possibly even overtake us. So uh, it's a question of balancing supply and demand from our end. Uh, we are currently producing 1 lakh syringes per day, which we will be increasing capacity to uh, 1.6 lakh pieces per day by July this year in phases. So uh, let's see, we try to keep up uh, with the needs. And also there was uh, a needing for clarity as to how many vaccines would be available uh, through the public healthcare system and how much will be available in the private healthcare direct access. The reason is because the drug delivery is going to be different for both. So don't you think that uh, uh, we need a kind of uh, clarity uh, as soon as possible in terms of how it's going to meet the uh, vaccination mission demand, with, uh, whether from private as well as public health care systems? When we were talking in the beginning, we were completely unclear that out of 1.35 billion people, uh, how many would be vaccinated? So it was initially a target of 60 to 70 percent. Then that was reduced to a first phase of uh, a target of about uh, 30 percent uh, to have about um, uh, 30 million. Then it was 30 million people to be 300 million people 
to be vaccinated by uh, uh, June to uh, September quarter. Uh, so that is a target which the government has put for itself of uh, trying to inoculate that many people by July, August, or latest by September this year. And uh, the syringes for that, of course, would be available. Uh, but again, what are the other additional challenges at the same time is that uh, we don't sell to the vaccine makers in most cases. So in most cases, the government or the WHO or UNICEF is buying the product. They buy the vaccine separately from the vaccine makers. And the macro demand is let known to manufacturers like us. Uh, so other than the intramuscular, so we've sought details from the government. Uh, we've raised these queries to the uh, Department of Pharmaceuticals and the Ministry of Health. And we are seeking that in case the vaccine manufacturers for commercially confidential reasons, if they're not able to disclose this individually to us, then maybe the government can find out from them and collate what is the macro demand for the nation. I think the whole country and uh, manufacturers of medical devices specifically have learned to be uh, highly responsive and uh, flexible and nimble. But again, there is a limitation because uh, the technologies that we deploy in HMD are really highly automated. And uh, whether to make needles at uh, 750 parts per minute or to pack syringes uh, and assemble syringes at 500 syringes per minute. So uh, this requires a very high precision engineering uh, molds and machines, which takes nearly a year's time to deliver and to set up and just can't be made in a couple of months' time. So when you talk about, again, domestic manufacturing, India imports uh, around 90% of medical devices still now. That's what we learned. How to reduce this import dependence post-COVID era if we don't promote the domestic manufacturing? Investors are going to be looking for a nominal tariff protection. So we don't, the WTO permits 40% custom duty. Currently for most items, it is 0% duty. Out of 148 HS codes, 20 of the HS codes have 0% custom duty. At 0% custom duty or 5% custom duty, uh, nobody is going to come forward and invest. They would rather import. It is much more convenient. The second way is what many countries do that they, when they invite investors in a, a medical device manufacturing, whether it's in Uganda, Saudi Arabia, Iran, uh, Malaysia, for example, they give them protection that they give them a preferred access to the local market. China, America do the same way. The third area is the area of medical device law. Now, medical devices are halfway house. For 15 years, we have been listening that the medical devices will be needing to be regulated. But unless we have a separate law, there is clarity people will not come forward because nobody wants to construct a factory and find that they have to uh, rebuild the factory or redo the infrastructure uh, because they were not meeting the legal requirements. So clarity and predictability is most important for any infrastructure. The another area is the import of refurbished equipment or pre-owned equipment. If you're finding it difficult to compete with pre-owned equipment coming in at nil rate of duty and then trying to compete with something which is coming in at half the price or one third the price, which is because it's second hand, becomes equally difficult. Mr. Modi did not allow Apple to make uh, bring in the second hand Apple iPhones. He insisted they need to put a factory here. Same thing we need to do for medical uh, devices. Another area is the area uh, I would say of ethical marketing. You can't have entrepreneurs trying to compete with Indian manufacturers or with overseas importers who are trying to induce hospitals and retailers with very high MRPs and very high trade margins. So you've seen that in the case of thermometers. If thermometers coming in at 500 rupees, stickers being put later on on FMRP of 5,000 rupees or 10,000 rupees. So somebody who's a manufacturer, he has to comply with the Legal Metrology Act, the labeling requirements, and he puts a MRP worth there are 1,500 rupees. Retailers don't find that profitable enough, so they will push the product with a higher margin. Now this creates artificial inflation. So you have a very strange position whereby the MRP of the product is 10 or 20 times its expected price or 10 or 20 times the import added price. We've been seeking that this needs to be monitored and this needs to be reduced to a maximum of four times. And once this is done, people will start buying the product based on the price they're going to get and the quality they're receiving, rather than trying to buy the product and push to the patients based on the MRP and the trade margins they're getting over there which is wrong. So whatever you said right now, uh, is that uh, are this the reason that uh, why India has not become a kind of manufacturing hub 
uh, despite promoting Make in India or very recently the Atmanirbhar Bharat or Vocal for Local? Are these the only reasons? There are many reasons, but I, I would say these are the five or six most critical uh, reasons uh, where I'm not against imports and I'm not against MNCs. We want MNCs to come in over here and invest. When they do that, if they act like a big brother, technology will come into the country and they'll get an ecosystem for subcontracting or franchising to Indian manufacturers. So that's going to help manufacturing come forward. But when imports are going to take place at the cost of domestic manufacturing and domestic manufacturers who were there are forced to become traders themselves and start becoming importers. When they find it's just more cheaper to import and more convenient to import because certain lobbies had reduced the duties to such a low degree or allowed certain flexibility for imports, then manufacturing becomes a disadvantage. Indian manufacturers factory is going to go through very strict inspections by drug inspectors, but an overseas factory is not even inspected. The goods which come in for drugs, uh, they can be picked up by samples and then sent for the uh, laboratory testing, whether they meet the quality requirements in case of a medicine. But in case of medical devices, since there are no laboratories available, there is no such testing. But for an Indian manufacturer, he is asked to give the BIS certificates, uh, the compliance to the BI certification, compliance to the testing certification, and all these requirements. And when everybody feels the same pain, they will start giving forward the same solutions. And that's what I think the medical device industry, we've been waiting for that. And now with DOP announcing the medical devices park scheme, uh, there's going to support four parks all over the country, but more than 10 states are in touch with IBIT uh, to come up with medical device parks. So I think uh, the whole country has suddenly woken up that this has been a neglected area and both medical devices and the toy industry are suddenly finding the limelight over there. So what sort of uh, policy intervention you, uh, you would recommend or suggest to make the medical devices industry truly Atman uh, in the very uh, you know, short term? So what sort of uh, suggestions you have for the policy makers? Very briefly, uh, we are not seeking subsidies. We are seeking a revenue support model and when we will grow, we will pay the taxes for the country to grow. What we are seeking is nominal tariff protection, separate medical device law, a chance to be allowed to do ethical marketing in a fair manner and compete fairly with the imports. Number four, restriction on the imports of pre-owned goods. The advantage to be given to us as a, a preferred product, uh, which is domestically made in public procurement and incentivization of uh, Indian certification for medical devices uh, for third party certification. To move away from Inspector Raj to third party certification so that there's an ethical and professional way of doing audits and compliances. Prompt clearance of all government outstanding payments to the manufacturers need to be done immediately. More than anything else, better than subsidies is to, for us to be paid on time the way we had tendered for our products. And a list of manufactured products, which the country is importing, if that is known to the country and at what price they're coming in, there's a coordinated strategy between the government and the association. Then the medical devices parks, which are coming up can be populated without doing any subsidies. It just needs coordination. So any uh, specific ask from the union budget, which is going to be there in uh, another couple of months? Yes. For the budget, we have made uh, three asks. Like I mentioned, we've asked for a predictable tariff policy. Right, sir. And uh, secondly, we've asked that in the bill of entry, there needs to be provision for the uh, importer to file his uh, maximum retail price. So the government has a monitoring mechanism at the time of import at what price they are importing the product on the invoice and what is the price they will be charging the consumer at the MRP level. This will also ensure that there is uh, proper labeling at the time of imports, not stickers put on later on after the imports have taken place. And the third area that we are seeking over there is that the drug inspectors at the ports need to start looking at the quality of what's coming in. And in terms of compliance with the Drug Act, start doing an informal check. Right now, we still have one and a half years time uh, to have the enforcement of the Act. 
because currently it's under the voluntary registration regime. But once they start knowing that what quality they have to achieve, they would start knowing that what kind of testing laboratories are there or not there in the country and the infrastructure is planned and created for that. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, with that, it's wrap on today's interactive session. Viewers, thanks for watching Moja for Industry. Bye for now.